Hey, this is Wes from PC Gamer, and joining me is James from PC Gamer. Hello. And we're here to talk about Halo Wars 2. Oh boy. Yeah, so I just went to a preview event recently, got to play a bunch of Halo Wars 2, played some campaign, played some multiplayer, and uh, as a fellow Halo fan, I figured I would rope you in here to right. basically ask me some questions about this game. I can do that. I can do that. I'm not too familiar with Halo Wars overall, having not played the first one, because it was, well, it was on the Xbox. Well, only on the yeah, Xbox. Only on the Xbox. So my concerns for this are, well, does it feel, it's also on the Xbox this time around, does it feel like the design is compromised because of that? So, good question, and that's probably the thing, like, anybody who is an RTS fan would be worried about yeah. with this game, right? Uh, it didn't feel like that to me at all. From, good. You know, I played about three or four hours of this game. Uh, I would definitely not use the word compromise for it. Uh, I spent about 90% of my time playing on PC, and it felt like... I was controlling a classic RTS. Cool. I mean, it, it had the the mouse and keyboard controls I would want with hotkeys, with the ability to group my units, mm. with the ability to click on the mini-map and jump around real quickly, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I tried playing it on a controller a little bit. I switched over to an cool. Xbox One, played about 10 minutes of a match on the controller, and immediately I was like, holy shit, this is so much harder <laughs> to control at the like degree of accuracy and speed that I was kind of used to just innately being able to do on the PC. Uh, so it's it's definitely you know a game that was designed to work with the controller, but all of the things you would expect for it to have as an RTS on the PC are definitely are definitely intact. So that was cool. that was a relief for me as well playing it. Cool. So if it plays like a classic RTS, what what's like the base building look like? Uh, this time around in resource resource management and all that jazz. Yeah, so you know it's it's interesting. The first game was made by Ensemble mm. Studios, who are kind of a uh, a legacy RTS company, right? They made Age of Empires. This time around, it's the Creative Assembly, who hmm. are kind of like a modern, you know, one of the people keeping the RTS alive on PC. They make right. the Total War games. Uh, in a lot of ways, though, it's pretty similar to the first Halo Wars from the little bit of that game I played. Uh, your bases are actually pretty simple. You just have this like, these kind of rectangles that are next to each yeah. other and you can just click on one and say like, I want to build a supply depot here and just plop a building down yeah. onto it. And that's, you know, that's all that it takes to build something. You don't have to control like a, a worker unit to go, you know, take them specifically over to one part of the map and choose to build a building there. It's very just like click and place and very fast. But that stuff aside, uh, it feels, like you're kind of doing the typical RTS micromanagement of your units because they all have special abilities that mm. you're going to need to trigger in battle. Uh, you're going to need to be at least in the bigger like deathmatch matches where you have a big map or in the campaign, you're going to need to be jumping around the map a good bit. You can't just like send some units over somewhere and you know, assume all's gonna go well. Mm. Like you're gonna have to really get into the fights and pay attention to what you're doing, pay attention to what enemy units your units are attacking, that kind of thing. Uh, so it, it again, like it doesn't really feel compromised, uh, but it feels like they kind of stuck with the streamlining mm. that the original game had and moved the focus onto being kind of a more of a fast-paced actioneer RP RTS where you're not doing super complex base building, mm. but those pillars of the genre are still there. Okay, um, so I, I assume that places a bit more emphasis on uh, managing your units, like you said, when it comes to RTS play, I, I typically think of like the rock paper uh, scissors uh, relationship. A lot of units have is is it changed here, or is it kind of still like aerial units versus ground units versus? I think that's pr this game yeah. kind of has a pretty typical balance there. Okay. Uh, the the producer I actually talked to from Creative Assembly mm. literally used that comparison, yeah. the rock paper scissors analogy. Uh, one thing that's really I thought was a really cool touch in this game is when you select a unit, you'll see down in the lower left-hand corner mm. like the name of that unit, what it is, you know, Warthog, for example. But then underneath that, it will also tell you what their role is in the oh, game. Oh, cool. So some of them will just say like core vehicle or core air or something like that. But then other ones will specifically call out anti-air, anti-inventory. Mm. So you'll know, oh, I have this anti-inventory troop. I should probably be directing it towards these other inventory 
tree because if it's just a flamethrower dude trying to melt a tank, he's just going to get blown up. You know, he's yeah. not going to do you any good. So I thought that was a cool touch for newcomers to the game. It certainly helped me figure out what to do with my units pretty quickly. And uh, other than that, yeah, you, you have your pretty traditional role of, you know, you're going to have some, some infantry who are, are good at ganging up on... Uh, on vehicles that have trouble hitting them. Mm. You're going to have your air units that uh, can pick off infantry or pick off vehicles that don't have, you know, air attacks, but they're going to get shredded by things that yeah. can do anti-air. Uh, so there's a pretty good balance there, and there's a, a, some interesting variety of specialized units for the different factions. Uh, for example, the UNSC, the humans, have this unit called the Nightingale that's mm. like a, a healing... Uh, airship basically yeah. it will hover over your other units like a helicopter and will heal a couple of them at a time uh, so as long as you keep that one hanging around you can keep your army in the fight for a pretty long time and I found that was really important in one of the multiplayer modes called Blitz uh, that I played a bit of because you have pretty limited resources there ah so this Blitz mode I'm am I am I actually seeing what I think I'm seeing here Wes there are cards. Cards. You're talking about the cards. Yeah. yeah. So Blitz Mode is uh, it's an interesting thing they've added to this game. It's it's kind of reminiscent of the Warzone mode that they uh, that is in Halo Five, mm. and uh, Creative Assembly kind of took that and did their own spin on it for for Halo Wars. It's it has your your deck building, your card packs, <laughs> like so many AAA games have yep. now. Uh, but you'll make a deck of different unit cards, your Warthogs and your Banshees and all that stuff. Uh, not, at the, not on the same team, because that's yeah. common in yeah. UNSC. Anyway, uh, you'll have all these unit cards, and you'll make a deck out of those, and then you get put your guys into a point control match, where they're like three points on the board, you have to control two of them at a time, or you're... Uh, your enemy, you know, if they have two, they'll start like ticking up points basically. And you can play it against the AI or against humans. And you have very limited resources to spend these cards in match and spawn units in with them. So you have to kill your enemy to gain more resources and try to position your army really efficiently mm. so that, you know, your tank absorbs most of the damage and, you know, survives longer and keep right. all your guys alive and suffer through wave after wave after wave of enemies and it gradually gets harder and harder and harder until hmm. finally you just can't take it anymore you know um, but it, it was pretty fun because you didn't have to worry about the the base building strategy elements of stuff it was purely just focusing on your units focusing on your positioning and coming up with cool compositions for your team through your cards and right. you know there's some element of luck of the draw there but you know if, if you like deck building. It's definitely a mode that you'll enjoy. If you hate that stuff, probably not the mode for you, but I think Halo Wars 2, uh, they're kind of trying to give something for everybody yeah. a little bit. You know, they have deathmatch, they have campaign, they and then they have stuff like blitz mode for, for people who want something a little bit faster. Cool. Uh, so I know you haven't played a ton of the campaign, but I, I, looking at this from a distance, it doesn't like scream Halo to me. Uh, d does it feel like a Halo game? Is that kind of quirky sci-fi, not too serious uh, uh, charm in there? You know, I hope so. Uh, I, hmm. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I think, like you said, I only I played like a mission from the campaign, yeah, yeah. Uh, and didn't see you know a whole lot of story surrounding that. Um, I think where the campaign is going to be where that sinks or swims, basically. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't feel like a super serious game, though. This mm. doesn't feel like a... It's not trying to be Company of Heroes, you know? It's not <laughs> yeah. like Halo and this is war and <laughs> war is hell and men are going to die, you know? It's not that serious. Mm. Uh, but it is... It doesn't quite have that just sense of, like, f just pure fun and spirit that Bungie did so well in sure. their first few Halo games. But at the same time, it's pretty colorful mm. you know it's not quite cartoony but it's it's a really colorful game uh, the units definitely have some character to them like the warthog has a really fun ability where you can tell him to ram into an infantry mm. unit and he'll kind of like 
squeal his tires and like fishtail and then right. go rocketing forward. So it has some kind of exaggerated elements that I think are pretty fun and the art style does really remind me of older Halo, especially like Halo 3 mm -hmm. era. So it feels like something that's appropriately Halo to me, but I don't know quite where they landed on the balance of, you know, micro machines like war toys versus micro machines like, yeah, this feels like Halo. You know? <laughs> cool, cool. Kind of to invert that question, for someone who's uh, maybe has no attachment to the Halo series, do you think this is kind of an RTS that would stand on its own? That's a tough one. Uh, for myself, I don't know if I would want to play this game if I wasn't a Halo fan. If I didn't care at all about the Halo wrapping, would I be really drawn to this? And I'm not sure that I would. But by the same token, we don't get very many RTS games on the Ow. PC yeah. anymore. You know, I feel like every one is kind of a treasure. It's like, there's a new, <laughs> there's a new RTS game this year, oh really? Uh, so if you're someone who's just starved for these kind mm -hmm. of games and really uh, just appreciates a new kind of a classical RTS, you know, yeah. despite this being a series that started out on console, mm. it it feels kind of like playing an old Command and Conquer game mm. in a lot of ways. You know, you're you have fun units, uh, it's pretty fast paced, you know, you're not having to do like crazy micromanagement, but you have some fun powers to work with. Uh, I think it really scratches that itch. Mm. So you know, if you hate Halo, you're probably not going to be too into it. Right. But I think if you're just really in the mood for an RTS game and don't care about Halo, then you'll probably like Halo Wars 2 quite a lot. And if you like Halo, so much the better. Right on. That clears up a lot for me, Wes. All right. So that's uh, that's about all I got for Halo Wars 2. You can also check out another video we put up that's just a full multiplayer match mm. without any uh, yammering on top of it. <laughs> and uh, the game's out pretty soon. It's February 21st. Oh, damn. So we'll have some more on Halo Wars 2 when it's out. And in the meantime, check out PCGamer.com for more PC gaming.